Let's use this simplified cell, which represents a diploid plant cell, to examine how changes in a cell's ploidy can contribute to the formation of new plant species. This cell has two sets of chromosomes, or a ploidy equaling 2n, each set consisting of one red and one blue chromosome. In a pair of homologous chromosomes, one chromosome originates from the female parent, indicated by the stippling, and the other originates from the male parent. When a diploid cell undergoes meiosis, it normally produces four haploid daughter cells, each with one set of chromosomes, or a ploidy equaling N. Every so often, an error called non-disjunction occurs in meiosis, and some daughter cells get too many chromosomes, while others get too few. Non-disjunction can occur in meiosis 1 or meiosis 2, but here we'll look at an example in meiosis 1. In meiosis 1, chromosomes would normally segregate from each other, with the chromosomes of each homologous pair going to opposite poles. However, in this case, all the chromosomes migrate to one pole. One daughter cell has no chromosomes, and the other has four. The cell with four chromosomes continues through meiosis 2. The chromosomes line up at the middle of the cell, and the sister chromatids separate. The cell divides, producing two cells. Through non-disjunction, a diploid parent cell has produced two diploid gametes. In contrast, normal meiosis results in four haploid gametes. They're called gametes here for simplicity, but keep in mind that in plants, the production of gametes requires many more steps. What would happen if two diploid gametes came together during fertilization? When two diploid gametes fuse during fertilization, the resulting zygote is a polyploid cell, meaning that it has more than two sets of chromosomes. A cell with four sets, or a ploidy equaling 4n, is more specifically called a tetraploid. This cell can also be called an autopolyploid because the doubled chromosomes are from the same species. The prefix auto means self. Polyploid plants survive perfectly well, but they cannot produce fertile offspring when mating with their diploid counterparts. To see why, we'll observe several rounds of meiosis and fertilization. First, let's see how a tetraploid undergoes meiosis. Like all cells, it first replicates its DNA. During meiosis, the homologous chromosomes may come together in pairs, in fours, or in other arrangements. The cell divides during meiosis 1. It divides again during meiosis 2. The result is four diploid gametes. Let's now consider the act of fertilization. When two normal haploid gametes fuse, the result is a normal diploid zygote. If two of these diploid gametes came together in fertilization, the result would be another tetraploid zygote that would continue the generations of tetraploids. However, when one of these gametes fertilizes a haploid gamete from a normal diploid plant, the resulting zygote has three sets of chromosomes, or a ploidy equaling 3n. It is triploid. Although a triploid zygote typically develops into a viable plant, meiosis in the triploid is a confusing affair. Before meiosis, the cell replicates its DNA. During meiosis 1, the homologous chromosomes undergo synapsis. The extra chromosomes lack homologs. They may pair with the other two, or they may not. The cell divides. Each daughter cell receives a unique assortment of chromosomes. The cells divide again during meiosis 2. In this case of triploidy, all the gametes have an extra chromosome and are designated N plus 1. In a system with more chromosomes than this example, every gamete has a different assortment of extra chromosomes. Apparently, this imbalance prevents seeds and pollen from developing normally. Many so-called seedless cultivars, such as bananas and watermelon, are triploids. Tetraploid gametes, on the other hand, have a balanced number of chromosomes. Because the tetraploid and diploid plants mate to produce sterile triploids, they are reproductively isolated and are considered two separate species. 
These diploid cells are from two different plant species. If the plants mate and create hybrid offspring, speciation can result. One of the cells has a diploid number of four chromosomes, and the other has a diploid number of six. When these cells undergo meiosis, they produce cells with haploid numbers of two and three chromosomes, respectively. Let's say that pollen from one species fertilizes an ovule from the other. In this case, the hybrid zygote may be viable because the sets of chromosomes it receives from each parent are complete. However, because the chromosomes don't exist in matching pairs, this zygote is essentially haploid, with a haploid number of five. Without pairing chromosomes, a cell cannot divide by meiosis, but it can divide by mitosis. If a non-disjunction error occurs in mitosis, the cell's ability to divide by meiosis can be restored. Before mitosis occurs, the cell replicates its DNA so that each chromosome consists of two chromatids. The chromosomes move to the middle of the cell. In this case of non-disjunction, all of the chromosomes move to one pole of the cell as the cell divides. The daughter cell that receives the chromosomes is now diploid, and it has a diploid number of ten. A cell with pairs of chromosomes can divide by meiosis, producing gametes with five chromosomes. These gametes can fertilize each other, resulting in a diploid zygote with ten chromosomes. This zygote represents the beginning of a new species. It contains all the chromosomes from its two parent species, but is now reproductively isolated from its parents because they all have different numbers of chromosomes. An individual of species C is an example of an allo polyploid, which is formed by combining gametes containing chromosomes of two distinct sets, followed by an error such as non-disjunction that results in chromosome doubling. Speciation based on allo polyploidy is common in wild plant species.